Okay, good afternoon, everyone. A warm welcome to Silverstone. A warm welcome to the Monster Energy British Grand Prix. Round 10 in the 2024 yeah, yeah, MotoGP World, World Championship. Yeah. And what a weekend we have to return from the summer holidays. A special weekend as we celebrate 75 years of racing. The riders on Sunday will race in special 75th anniversary retro liveries as we go into 11 rounds in 16 weekends to decide who will be world champion in 2024. We're joined by the top three riders in the standings, led by the Cati Anobo team's Pekka Bagnaya, winner of the last four Grand Prix, leading the World Championship by 10 points, winner at Silverstone back in 2022, and trying to be the first Ducati rider in history to win five successive Grand Prix. To Peko's right, we welcome Prima Pamak Racing's Jorge Martin. Jorge second in the standings, 13 podiums so far this season, and his sprint win in Germany was his 13th success on sprint Saturdays. And completing the lineup is Grazzini Racing's Mark Marquez. Mark, <laughs> third in the World Championship, a 125cc winner here at Silverstone back in 2010, and the MotoGP winner here 10 years ago in 2014. Gentlemen, welcome to all three of you. I trust you're all relaxed and rested after the summer holidays. Back to business, though, here in Silverstone. Pekka, we'll start with you. It was a busy summer break, getting married to Domitia. Congratulations Thank on you. that special day. Winner of the Race of Champions as well at World Ducati Week. Confidence must be sky high after those four successive wins, Pekka, pre-summer break. Is Silverstone a good track for you to try and pick up where you left off in Germany? Honestly, it was, uh, was good to have some, a bit of stop after the uh, success in GP. I went to Sardinia with my, with my wife and uh, it was fantastic to have a bit of uh, rest. And then in the week of, uh, of the wedding, I started to, to, train, uh, to train again. So it wasn't easy to be focused on the training, knowing that I was getting married in, uh, in five days. But honestly, I, it was a fantastic day. I enjoyed a lot and uh, it was everything fantastic. Much, much beautiful, much nicer than what I was expecting, so, for, so it was great. And then we had the Voodoo, so the World Ducati Week. Uh, for sure, was, it's not easy for a, for a Ducati rider to, be, to, be, um, to relax in this kind of uh, weekend, because you want to be in every place to meet all the Ducati fans, but it's very difficult to, to do. But, uh, but I, really enjoy, I really enjoyed everything, and I hope that uh, the Ducati fans had uh, a really great uh, opportunity to, to enjoy with us, to, to, to be happy with, uh, with the race and uh, to, to have done a very good show. And just quickly, Silverstone, a good track for you to try and continue this amazing run? I love, uh, I love uh, the layout. It's one of the, the nicest for sure. It, uh, it's very long and it's very smooth, not very bumpy, so it's one of the, the greatest. For sure, uh, and this this season we will discover a new a new weather because uh, was ne was never this this hot, but I think we can uh, we can uh, enjoy and uh, I love this kind of layout. Just quickly on that big day, that special day, getting married to Dimitri, we just wanted to know: were you more nervous waiting for the lights out on the grid on Sundays, or more nervous waiting for your new wife to arrive? Uh, it's different, but uh, honestly, I never cried uh, like this when I was doing the, the walk uh, with my with my mom arriving to the to the to the front of the of the line was a very uh, emotional moment. Then when we had to say yes was uh, a very emotional moment. So much more nervous than uh, than the rest of should say once again, congratulations to Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Banyai. Well done, Peko. <laughs> uh, we'll move on then to uh, Hoy Martin. Hoy, I guess plenty of time in the summer break uh, to relax, but also to reflect on what happened in the sax ring. You said, I think the media afterwards, it could be one of the most important days in your career in terms of, of learning. What lessons did you learn in that summer break looking back to Germany? And is there anything that you'll change moving forward from this weekend? Well, first of all, I want to congratulate Peko. I did it all uh, on private, but uh, I wanted to say now. It was amazing for a nice moment for him. I know him for a lot of years, so it's fantastic. And yeah, about the, yeah, it was nice to stop, as Peko said. Uh, actually, I didn't stop training. I, I, I wasn't able to, to, you know, to, to switch off completely. I was, even if I was, uh, on the beach and on the sea, I was still training and trying to to don't lose my 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 fitness, no. And and yeah, I was trying to analyze. I analyzed with the team. I tried to to take a look back to the to the latest crashes uh, in Saxony, also Mugello and Jerez. And it seems there are some similar situations. 
there's a similar situation, so let's try to work on it, try to understand uh, how to how to avoid it in the future because uh, I think we lost we lost the the lead and we lost some good opportunities to to have some victories. So let's try to to move forward and to to race here in Silverstone that I really like. Best luck to you this weekend, Hoy Mark. Well, come on uh, to you, of course. Another amazing comeback on Sunday in Germany. A special podium showing it with your brother Alex Silverstone, though. Could not be more different to the Saxon ring, Mark. It's fast. It's an open layout. So do you feel you have the tools to fight for the, the win here this weekend? Yeah, of course, uh, we're coming from a good uh, summer break and uh, where uh, we had time to, to relax. And, uh, and yeah, we will try to start uh, the second part of the season uh, in a good way. Uh, Silverstone is, a, as Peko say, a good circuit. And, uh, and yeah, let's see. I mean, uh, I don't want to uh, say anything before to, to start riding because uh, I can expect a bit what uh, we can have there. But uh, especially these two guys are a bit faster than, uh, than us. And just quickly, Mark, of course, you got your first experience of World the Catty Week in the summer break. They look quite eventful, but we could see you got an amazing reception from the fans. I just wondered, has that made you understand more what it means to be part of the Ducati Easty and how important it is to be part of this Ducati family? Yeah, of course, well, it was my first event uh, with the Ducati family. And, uh, and yeah, already the big bosses uh, say to me that uh, you will start to feel what uh, means the Ducati. And, uh, and yeah, I, I understand that, that uh, Ducati is not only MotoGP. It's, uh, it's kind of a philosophy. And, uh, and yeah, Ducati, they were supporting us there. Uh, they were cheering a lot. And, uh, and yeah, we will try in the future to defend well that, uh, that colors. And just finally, to all three of you gentlemen, of course, it is a, a huge celebration weekend for the MotoGP World Championship, the 75th anniversary. You've just all unveiled the special liveries that you'll race here on Sunday. What a moment that will be in front of the British crowd. Pecco, we'll come to you first. How happy are you with the, the special design? I think it's the Catty's first paint scheme from 2003. Honestly, uh, I'm very happy to, to have this kind of, that Dorna had uh, this idea. It's fantastic to see all the delivery from the past or some uh, new ideas so it's great i i love the old design because i think it's more classic it's more uh, clean apart uh, is diff for in our case it's difficult to to see clear the delivery because the cause of the sponsors but uh, in case of yama or honda the delivery is fantastic i really love the one of uh, of yama because it's very clean and uh, I, I like it, but uh, for everybody it's the same, so uh, I would like to have more of this kind of ideas and more of this kind of uh, livery in the future. Your bike looks amazing. Oh, of course, there's still a very close connection with the Nieto family in your team, with Fonzie, very much a big part of Pramac Ducati, and you've paying tribute to the legend, Angie Nieto, a beautiful paint scheme and a, and a nice helmet to match as well. Yeah, as you said, paying tribute to, to a legend like Angel is uh, amazing. It's an, an honor to, to race on Sunday with uh, his colors, also with his helmet. I think this is super important. And I think, yeah, uh, Paolo has had a really close friendship with Angel. So when they had the chance, uh, they thought the straight away to make his, his bike. So I think it's fantastic. And, and yeah, I think we should do it more. I really like to, to change the, the light liveries, also the helmet. So it's fantastic. And Mark, of course, uh, we know the Grazini team, very much a, a family team. It's clear figurehead was Fausto, and you're running a beautiful tribute livery to him as well this weekend. Yeah, of course, our design is uh, super special because it's not only retro design. Uh, it's from uh, 87, uh, the gallery that uh, right, uh, right uh, Fausto. And, uh, and yeah, it's emotional uh, design, uh, emotional delivery. So, uh, so yeah, uh, we will try to to bring uh, or to, yeah, to, to make a, a good Sunday with that uh, colours. Well, they look super cool. I'm sure they're going to be super fast as well. Best luck to all three of you uh, this weekend. MotoGP Social is coming up a little bit later. But time now, please, for questions from the media. Thank you. Hello, guys. This is uh, Frank Bing from uh, Ziggo Sport. I have two questions, actually. Uh, first question, maybe you can think about it. Um, because of the fact that this uh, weekend is 75 years of MotoGP, was there in your past um, a race that you remember very well, not from yourself, but maybe from a, an idol that you thought, OK, this is where I want to be as well? That's my second question, actually. My first question is, it's a little bit uncomfortable because we all know him very well, but next year there will be a new uh, chief of the stewards panel. Um, what do you guys think of the fact that uh, Simon Crafer will be the new chief of the panel. 
I think it's uh, one of the hardest work to do here in the in the paddock because to choose kind of things is not uh, is not easy. But uh, what what I think is uh, is good with Simon is that we can have a, a good dialogue dialogue with uh, with him. Is uh, is Harry? Is we speak a lot with uh, with uh, Simon every weekend and. Uh, and I think uh, if uh, he can take always the same line, uh, could be a really good job. But for sure, for sure, it's not an easy, an easy job. Yeah, for me, it's a, you know a big change, a great change. I think uh, I know Simon quite a lot, and, and also I I know that he's still riding, riding. So for sure, he will understand a bit better how the bike moves or how how the things can change so fast and, and yeah, I think he, as Peko said, can be a bit more equal uh, between different, different situations. Uh, he's also always coming to, to try to understand the sport no? and trying to, to learn from us, asking us some questions, so for sure he will be uh, really, really good on his new job. As they say, I wish the best luck to Simon and, uh, and yeah, I, I wish the, the best to him because it's a very difficult position. It's like the referee in the soccer. I mean, uh, impossible to make uh, happy every, everybody. So in the end, uh, it's the race direction, uh, and uh, we need to adapt with f if it's some new rules, if it's the same rules, or uh, where is the, the limit. And, uh, and yeah, uh, as we understand this, uh, this year, uh, it's changing a bit, and, uh, and I feel comfortable. And yeah, uh, I think this is the, the line. And then my second question, maybe you guys know or remember a special race? No. Yeah, yeah, I remember uh, one, one, the first race that comes to my mind when I was very young was the Valencia 2003 uh, MotoGP. Because I remember this uh, livery of, uh, I don't know how to say, Nippy. I don't know if uh, the Repsol logo of Valentino done in, uh, in a strange way. And I remember very well. Uh, I remember also wh where I was looking at this uh, at this race. I was in this uh, in this house in uh, close to Rome, looking at the um, uh, Welcome 2004. And uh, these are the, my first two remember of uh, of the of racing. Yeah, for me, I remember uh, Val Valencia 2006 that I was there also. Uh, I was in the track, I met Valentino also for my first time, so it was fantastic. But if I have to, to take one, the one I, I lived the most no, was uh, Laguna Seca 2008. And I think this was uh, the greatest race. Mm. Mm. I would choose the Duhan Cribillé uh, last lap in Jerez. Uh, this maybe was the, the first moment where uh, I start to remember uh, something. And it was, uh, was on that time that especially that last lap was incredible with all the people in the, in the middle of the racetrack. Good afternoon. This is Thomas Kutru from speedweek.com. Special question to Jorge. 